because it's New Year's Eve and we all were on a flight and we get into the storm and the pilot loses connection to uh, every single cell tower and that he has no idea where we are and we have to land on an island that is one of the most dangerous places on earth and then the story unfolds from there and there are a lot of challenges we have to face and how our pilot tries to guide us. So I play Brie and she's on a trip with her best friend Katie and I think this is the first trip they really take together and the first time they're not together with their family and I think they really represent the innocence and they really remind Torrance of his family and of his daughter and I think that's one of the characters that really motivate him to get us all home and get us safe because we're more afraid and we're more terrified and we have never been confronted with a fear like that and I think seeing our kind of raw emotions and the what we're going through really gets him to try to see the humanity in all of it and really try to get home also to his family. So Jer Butler played Torrance and what I loved about working with him is he's so committed, he's so dedicated. Every day he shows up and even though it was a really tough shoot, he never really complained at all. He was always prepared, knew his text, knew exactly with what he was going into it, knew everyone's names, was very sweet to everyone on set and really tried to have a conversation with all of us. And I think his work ethic really inspired all of us to really show up every day and give it our best. The thing about Jerry is he was such a committed and such a great and talented actor, but at the same time, he was the most hands-on producer you can imagine. Like you said, handing out water, making sure for every scene we had enough sweat so it was really realistic and fit together with a plot. And just by really getting us all to connect, to talk, to see if we're doing okay, to see if the circumstances, if someone needs something, like vitamin C was handed out a lot just because of the heat and the humidity. And his care for the other people and the care for the project really translates into the love, into the movie, which makes it so successful. Working with Ensemble for so long is one of the things I love about acting because you go to a project, you don't really know anyone, and within a week, they all kind of become like family. And we were a pretty big group. I think in the tent and acting together, we were like always 15 people. And after spending three months together, you get really used to each other. And I have this every time I leave set. You get very sad because you miss seeing those people around every day. Even on our days off, we would do things together, go to the national park. And it just very quickly becomes a very familiar environment where everyone is very interested in getting to know each other. We play games, we talk, we learn from each other, we exchange books. And it became this wonderful community in a way. And then the suffering even sometimes or waiting for hours on end suddenly becomes enjoyable because you get to spend time with these people. So it was definitely a wonderful experience to have this community for such a long time. Daniela has a humor that is incomparable. She's hilarious. She's also so talented. And I think the way she could joke in between takes and then be completely in the role while the camera was rolling is an incredible talent and she really also interacted with all of us always had a good mood she was very funny she came with her flip-flops and pillows if we had a 5 a.m call time she just made everything very humane and similar to jerry like they're very well known and talented people but they're so grounded and so interested in the people around them that it's an honor to learn from them and just see them work he plays this very secluded mysterious person and i think very quickly at the beginning of the movie we find out that somehow he can be dangerous. And I think that also adds to the tension between the passengers before even the plane crash, that we're all very tense of what did this guy do and what is he capable of? And then also his reactions to the entire plane crash, he was a lot calmer than any of us were. And I think his mysteriousness and his unpredictability adds more tension between the passengers even before we face more challenges. And it adds an interesting dynamic of this push and pull of, oh, he's helping, is he really helping? What is his motivation? And he adds a lot of the internal conflict that we all have already, and then adds to the external by then, oh, he leaves with our captain. What is he up to? So there's so many questions that arise from his character that add to the tension of the movie. I think Brie and Katie uh, play a significant role in Captain Brody's consciousness of trying to get us out of there. A lot of the times we're the characters who are very helpless and just don't know what is going on and we're very afraid of dying and we make that very apparent to him. And I think the other characters show more strength or don't show that weakness to the other passengers or especially the captain, but by us being so unexperienced and being so afraid and show, being so helpless and asking Torrance for almost fatherly advice, he feels very responsible 
to get us out of there and to give us hope. And I think him giving us that hope continuously inspires him and gives him more strength to go through that. Jim Churchman made sure that everything we did was safe and that was his priority. And before anything, before any dangerous situation involving guns or involving possible risks or where they were manhandling us, he talked to all of us, asked if we were okay with it, if we had any injuries. And just by telling us what was gonna happen and ensuring that we were all on the same page, it was a very safe environment. For example, there's one scene in the bus where there's a very big shake and a violent shake. And if we wouldn't have known that, I think a couple of us would have actually blown up in the air. But just by knowing what is coming and knowing what to expect, he always made sure that we were ready. There's a lot of physicality in this entire movie. I mean, most of it is us being afraid, running away, trying to find an answer, trying to find a solution. And then the gimbal was the second part of the shoot, and you hear so much about it. And there's so many rumors going around of how bad it is, and people telling you that have been on it, that it's like so terrifying, and you're gonna puke, so you shouldn't eat. So I was ready for the worst, and I got on the gimbal, and I was like, okay, whatever's gonna come, we're ready. And then I got on there and I was like, oh, this is actually not too bad. And it was great because if you have this expectation and it is not that, everything you get is great. And it was not us being like tossed around and actually hurting ourselves that much. So I was like, oh, this is okay. But it was definitely very physical in the way that I think for eight or nine hours a day, we were on that being shaken around and then doing that again and being tossed forwards or backwards. And I think just doing that for such an extended period of time wears you out a bit. And I, that's the part where you have to be like, I need to bring the same energy every time. John Francois was our director and he was very hands-on. So he knew exactly what he wanted every take and every motive to be. So he would like test it out with his phone and with his hands and would come up to us and test different angles and see how he could, for example, walk through it quickly or like have all these different ideas that I never saw before in filmmaking, where it was very much not a static camera, but a moving camera. It would shift from perspective to perspective. It would run around, it would turn to really show the chaos we were in and that we were feeling. And I loved that approach. Like he had very original ideas and really helped us to just completely trust him in the process and I think that turned out really well. And I used to never have a problem with flying and it's so funny, I flew to Puerto Rico to do this movie and I read the script again and I was kind of shaky. And I was like, oh, this is not a good sign. And then I was like, okay, this is fine. I'm doing a movie about it. And I believe sometimes in like manifestation, I was like, oh God, this is horrible. And that was like the first time I was actually afraid of flying. I was like, okay, it'll be fine. So I arrived and on my way back, we had actually got into a storm because there were some hurricanes going on and the plane was shaking violently. And I was like, oh God, so now I'm gonna die on my way back after doing like a movie about a plane crash. And suddenly it really got into my head because you were in that mindset for so long and I used to never be afraid of flying. And it slowly faded away again, but I have to say it stuck with me for a bit. Generally, every actor puts so much love and care into every movie and every character they play. And I think the, one of the biggest pleasures is to see it all come together, no matter what you do in that movie, but just seeing your creative work being put to screen and being like all polished and beautiful in this package. And we put so much work into it and so much of our time for three months. And I think the thing I'm most excited about is just seeing it all come together with the music, with the green screen, with like all our actions and all the scenes just being finally wrapped up in the movie. I just can't wait to see it because there were so many moments and so many different moments. And over that entire time, you kind of forget about all the individual ones. And then seeing how they all unfold in that story together is gonna be incredible to see. There's just a difference if you see a movie in a theater or at home. Like I noticed that myself, the sound is different. The expressions you see is different. The way you feel with the characters, cause you're completely undistracted in like this dark room. You have the sound all around you. You have this huge screen with all the expressions. It just really gets you connected to the story differently. And you don't have the same experience at home. And I think with everything that happens in that movie and it's so rich in action, you really want to see all of it unfold and be part of that experience and the sound and the magnitude of seeing it on the big screen really changes your perception of the film. And that's why I'm so glad it's gonna be a theatrical release. When I read the script, there were so many shifts in it that I didn't expect where I was like, this script is so rich. There's so much happening and so many turns and twists that I would have never seen coming. And I love that about movies when it's not, oh, this is gonna be the end. But there's so many moments where the fate of all the characters changes continuously and unexpected things arise that 
like no audience member would expect. And when you think it was bad, it's going to get worse and then it's going to get better. And the movie has so much of that that I think it's going to be very surprising for the audience that, oh, this is not just a plane crash movie. There's so much more to it. And the actual story unfolds after the crash.